children. Please welcome to the stage the director, Marc-Henri Weinberg. I don't know what I have to say. Uh, hello. Uh, I'm just arriving from, uh, from uh, Paris. So my plane had three hours of delay. So I'm happy to be here. <laughs> uh, what can I say? I will be there. I will be there for Q&A after. Uh, so the best is uh, maybe no, no, to say nothing before. Um, je crois. No, no, uh, well, uh, I could say that uh, I began this project three years ago. Um, I, have a, a friend, I have a friend who is manager of music group in Kinshasa, and uh, those group had a, a, a tour in Europe and in the States, and he could not get the, the, the visa for those musicians. So I said to him, okay, if you musicians, they, if they cannot come, I will go in Kinshasa and I will film them. Uh, that was the beginning of the project. When I, and I, when I arrived in Kinshasa, I was so amazed by this city. Uh, what you will see, it's, a, it's a, nothing works, it's a mess. Uh, and the ru the, the, the ru the, uh, there are cut of uh, electricity, of, uh, of water, uh, the roads are broken, uh, people are poor, there, there's a lot of violence, 25 people, in the, uh, kids in the streets. And, and in the other way, there was a lot of energy, of, uh, of color, of music, of humor. And, uh, and now I, I felt in love with those people. Uh, the, and my project has changed. And I wanted to give them a... a, a, a uh, it was at this moment, it was difficult. I didn't want to do any more a film on, on the music and the city, but I wanted to do a film on on all, all the feelings I had. So it's something, it's a mix between uh, uh, fiction and documentary, but I, I want to say this is a fiction, but some sequences are a documentary. But we can speak about that later. Have a nice screening. Sorry. Um, how did you find these extraordinary kids that we've just spent the last 85 minutes with? Um, I, I went six times uh, in Kinshasa before uh, sh the shooting, so I met a lot of kids and I, I did uh, uh, some casting with a uh, few, uh, three, four hundred kids, mm -hmm. and uh, that was very impressive for me at the beginning. Be fact, they were very impressed by the situation because it was the first time that they, some, some a white man was taking some attention to them. So to, to feel them relaxed, I had to explain before, oh, we do a movie because they didn't know. So I was explaining, okay, to, if, we, if we want to shoot a movie, for example, if someone is at home, uh, he's uh, drinking a glass, then he goes out and then he goes to see a friend, but maybe we will shoot one day when he's at home, another day when he's going out, another day when he's uh, going to a friend, we, we cut, we put that together, we make a music and we have a sequence. Uh, so uh, they were impressed, and then I asked them uh, who, who wanted to, 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 to sing for me. So uh, finally one uh, was ready to, to sing, and then uh, the other were laughing, and another wanted to sing, and then finally they were relaxed, and uh, from casting to casting I, I did a group, and uh, I finally, finally I had this group of kids. Mm -hmm. And you said in your introduction that it, it is somewhat of a hybrid between fiction and nonfiction, but th that it is a scripted movie. How are th are the stories of these kids their own stories? How how did you craft the the script? Um, well, concerning the kids, I want to say that uh, they, they are in group in Kinshasa. So they, uh, before the the shooting, they didn't know each other. So we have rent a, a house. Uh, and they've stayed during some weeks uh, together with uh, someone who was uh, doing the food, a uh, professor teacher of uh, music, teacher of French. So at the beginning of the shooting, they were really a group. And uh, I spent a long time meeting uh, kids and uh, mama, papa, uh, musicians, uh, day and night, uh, going from one side to the city to, to another side. 
hearing a lot of stories. And uh, I, I wrote this, uh, the story of, the, of this film, uh, was based on a, a lot of all the stories they, they, they tell me, they told me. Um, so in a way, it's a, it's a fiction, but based completely on, on, uh, on real stuff. And uh, sometimes I had a, 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 a emotional moments. For example, at the beginning you have the exorcism with uh, the little Jose. The first sequence is a real exorcism. And the fiction begins when the, the woman called Jose, Jose, and he's escaping. Then, then the fiction begins. And, uh, it was, uh, and then uh, the sequence after you have uh, Jose with the parents. But of course, those are not the parents of Jose. He has no more parents. And uh, the situation was a bit uh, difficult for him. I understood that something was strange. So I asked to the, the woman who was playing the mother and uh, the, the, uh, a, a guy from the shooting, from the crew, to, to discuss with him in Ningala. And uh, th th that was exactly the situation that, that he, he had to suffer uh, years before. Mm -hmm. So that was good for him to, to, to play it. It was a kind of real exorcism. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there are also these fascinating moments of tension where we're made to be very conscious of the fact that you are making this film, for example, when the police officer says, hey, there's this white guy with a camera. Did that, was that a, a real unscripted moment or was this a scripted moment? No, no, that was uh, the policemen are actors. Oh, they're actors, okay. Uh, but the real moment was the accident. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the real moment. So we 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 were doing uh, we were shooting, and at the moment during the shooting, we heard uh, some sound. Mm -hmm. So I immediately asked the the, the cameraman to, to take the situation. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, we had some uh, some yeah. some uh, one, a guy from the crew was stopping the 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 the, the, the cars and the the. the Camionette, how you say it? The, the truck, tr huh? Hit him, did, they, they didn't want to stop, and that's why uh, he, he tried to escape, he could not, he came back, and then and, uh, it was a bit dangerous because the, I, I was afraid maybe they could uh, be killed, because uh, sometimes it's very hot, but by chance, it was only the, the windows were broken. But uh, it was very dangerous. I had the, I did this sequence with the, the policemen because uh, four or five times a day I was I was arrested by policemen. Oh. So I had to, to, to show it in a way that yeah. uh, it's uh, the, the film is the vision of a white guy. Right. It's right. my vision of, of what right. what oh, I felt Kinshasa. But uh, five times a day I was uh, by chance when I was with people it, it was not too difficult because I was with a crew. So we had some papers and that. But uh, at the beginning of the shooting, I was uh, going from one side to the other in Kinshasa without, uh, I didn't want to be with someone, I wanted to be alone. Mm -hmm. And so I was aggressed uh, and almost killed three times by people and, or by policemen or both. How long was the shoot? <laughs> uh, how long was the shoot? No, no, uh, the shoot was, uh, uh, the shoot was uh, five weeks, then uh, then three weeks, three months after, and then one day, three months after, I went for one day uh, again for, for to do some nickel uh, shots. This was a lot to happen over the course of making this film. To be almost killed three times. Is but I was the first when I when I uh, the first time when I was there, uh, I didn't know that uh, it was forbidden to to take pictures. Mm. In fact, it's not completely forbidden, but that's not really clear. Mm. So uh, I saw some uh, I saw some uh, railways, the, the, the rail, yeah, mm -hmm. railways. Uh, we're going inside a kind of village, so I didn't want to do that from the place where I was living to the centrum of Kinshasa by uh, walking. So it was three hours of walking, and I've asked to some people if, if I could. Uh, take some picture, what I did, and on the moment I asked to someone, he said yes, but suddenly someone said, hey, Mundele, you cannot take a picture. Mundele is a white man. Uh, so immediately I put my camera in, in, my, in my bag, 
He came to me, Mundele, you cannot take a picture. I said, okay, I didn't take a picture. Yeah, Mundele, Mundele, so you cannot pick a picture. Give me your paper, give me, I, can, I, I, can, I will arrest you. So I said, okay, I didn't make any picture, let me. But there were four or five people around me. And then he said, you took a picture, Mundele, you took a picture. Oh, I didn't take a picture. Then there was 10 people around me. <laughs> and then it was, uh, you stole a picture. I didn't stole any picture, let me, let me. So that <laughs> You cannot take, you took, you stole. The Mundele is a spy! The Mundele is a spy! <laughs> Suddenly there were 30 people on me, so I was, uh, it became a bit dangerous. Yeah. So the only situation was to, 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 uh, uh, rentrer en trance. So, so, I'm going to in trance. So, so the first time that they were seeing a, a white man as, and, a, and, a, and a man, because uh -huh. normally it's those are women who are becoming in trance. Mm -hmm. And so they were afraid to see a white man. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a solution to make. Uh, And then, uh, suddenly, <laughs> uh, j'ai traversé. You crossed? Uh, ouais, la foule. So they were afraid. Up, up in the street, stop a car. The door was closed. Another car. The door was closed. All the doors are always open, but those ones were closed. Closed, then, a camionette. A truck, a camionette. Why? Uh, go, 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 go. 30 people, 40 people around the camionette. And the guy said, cool, relax. You will not, you, they will not kill you. Yeah, yeah, but they won't. <laughs> <laughs> we are from the Monuc. So the Monuc is uh, Mission ONU Congo. Mission You Know Congo. But for me, Monuc is um, uh, a Jeep with a black driver and a white man. Mm -hmm. It's not... Uh, <laughs> It's not a, a car with two, a camionette with two white men, okay. uh, two black men. And uh, so it was discussion during uh, uh, more or less uh, 20, 40 minutes. Finally, a guy came in said, saying, I'm a policeman. Then we went out and the first guy who had arrested me, I'm sorry, it's a bit too long. Huh? Oh, no. No, I right, should <laughs> Why? Because I have a lot of stories like this. Finally, I have escaped. They were really guy from the Monuc. Uh -huh. Well, I'm there. Well, voilà. <laughs> and now you're here <coughs> at Walter Reed. Well, well, no, yeah, the 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 yeah, yeah, I, no, no, it was sometimes very, 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 very dangerous. Yeah. But. You, uh, you think fast on your feet. <laughs> that, that sounds like it saved your, your skin. Okay. There have got to be some questions. I'm sorry, I could have explained this situation uh, quickly in French. <laughs> but uh, I will ask now that I have to be careful when I explain some stuff because uh, my English is so... Oh, no, no it, was, it was fantastic. Okay, yeah. well, fun fantastic. Yeah. fantastic. Okay. Bon. Uh, Yes, just, oh, there's a microphone. If you could just wait for the mic, yeah. Uh, just out of curiosity, um, did you go there to film Papa Wembe? I mean, I thought Papa Wembe li was living in Paris. Is he still living in, in Congo? The question Papa is, Wembe? Is, is Papa Wemba still living in the Congo? <coughs> Papa, is the question is, Papa Wemba is still living in Congo? Mm -hmm. Yes. And playing. And playing and singing, Wonderful. and uh, he was there doing the shooting. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, I was just curious. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. How did you find uh, Madame Josephine, the marvelous cellist? Uh, I knew the, there was this uh, group of uh, Kimbangist, uh, classical musicians. Mm -hmm. So I met a lot of those musicians, I have decided to choose Josephine. She was the most energetic and uh, 
just this restaurant. So we plan to, to make a story with, uh, with her. I wanted to, that each character, each person of the, of the, the history had a, a project. Mm -hmm. So a project was to save the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And have, have the kids, the, the, what is their group's name? The Devil Does Not Exist. Diabla Did Zati. They, have they given other performances since, since you, you completed the shoot? Uh, no, they wanted to, 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 to stay together, but uh, the life is difficult. And uh, after the film, Rachel has played in a Canadian movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, she won the um, uh, Golden Beer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in Berlin. Uh, now, so, so now she's living with other people in the house. Uh, Emma, I've paid the mother to get to have a, a house, and now he's staying with the mother. <coughs> I, um, I've paid for all the kids' uh, school and uh, insurance and so on, but the, the, the money has been stolen by the, some parents or some educator. Mm. So I've paid the second time. Mm -hmm. So uh, now there are four kids who are staying with an educator and uh, we are trying to, uh, to, to have a deal, enfin, we have a deal with an uh, 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 interna, mm -hmm. but uh, it's difficult for them to, to decide to go because the educator, they don't want to let them go in because the kids are working for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it means that uh, they are not living all together and they are not singing together for the moment. And it's, uh, I'm in contact uh, every week mm -hmm. with some of them. And I hope the, in, a, in a few, before the end of the year, that some of them will go finally in the interna. Right. Other questions? Uh, yes, a woman here in the center. Just wait for the microphone, please. How old were the kids? Uh, between 10 and 13. Gabi was 10 when I was doing shooting. Gabi is the, the little with uh, the uh, football <coughs> t-shirt. Uh, yes. But they are living since, uh, excuse oh, me, please. they are in, in, uh, in the streets since years. They were living in the streets some, some since four or five years. gentleman here on the side. Uh, two questions. Uh, one is, uh, in this part of Africa, um, films and music is pirated very, very quickly after it's produced. So I wondered about the reality of these kids' fantasy of getting out of their sort of uh, economic position um, through becoming uh, music stars. The second question has to do with the casualness of the rape that takes place. And I wondered how that plays out in reality um, amongst these kids. So the first question is uh, the, the, the piracy, the, the pi what piracy? Is that, that is Jim back there? Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
I don't know if I will answer really to the, the question. Uh, the, concerning the music, um, I, the, the project of Bepson was, is to do a, a, a CD and to do some tour. Uh, so that's what he's, he's trying to do in the film. And uh, I went uh, especially in January in uh, Kinshasa and I've recorded his CD. So I try to find now someone to distribute it. And uh, the project is, uh, I'm, I'm working to find a, a manager for the moment, for him to, to do some tour. Uh, for the kids, uh, well, of course, there are some of them who would like to be uh, musicians. Uh, we'll see. Uh, the first one is for them to go first uh, in a school. Uh, I don't know if I answer to the question or not. Is it is it an answer or not? Yeah, we have time for. And uh, and concerning the rape. Yeah. Yeah, concerning the rape, I would like to to know uh, what your feeling. Um, um, in fact, all of those kids have been raped uh, in the streets uh, by. Uh, boys and girls uh, by some uh, friends uh, of them, uh, adults, and uh, it's something very uh, common. Uh, and when it happened, there is no uh, parents, no psychologue, uh, no uh, policemen, uh, nobody uh, to try to resolve uh, such a situation, uh, the life is, the life continue. Uh, so I wanted to show something uh, concerning that, and I didn't want to, uh, and for me the best, best, uh, the way to show it was to, to do it like this, uh, to give the feeling that there is a rape and uh, somewhere the life continue. Um, and I know that sometimes people are, are shocked by the way uh, it's, it, is be, it has been uh, shown. So I would like to know if, so, if you have been shocked or what you feel. Well, uh, what, what was interesting to me about that scene was how she bounced back and that no one made a big deal about it which um, if that were to happen here or that would be represented in a film here, it would have a very different tone and context to it. And it made me incredibly sad. I'm not, my criticism isn't of the filmmaker, it's just that, that, that the fact that you included that I thought was very important. That's true, and, uh, and um, people react in a, a different way when, when I show it. It depends where, where I show the, the, the film. I've been the first, the first, first, first uh, screening I did in Kinshasa for the crew and the kids, and I was surprised by the reaction of some, uh, some adults uh, or during this, uh, this rape. Some of them were uh, laughing and I understood after that that was things that they were doing themselves. Uh, and I was shocked because uh, those some were, uh, were part of the crew. But uh, they were all shege. They were, they were part of uh, the, the people who, are, who were protecting us because uh, when we were doing shooting in the market, it was sometimes dangerous. And I understood that they were, in fact, uh, them. Thank you again, Marc-Henri, for this incredible film. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.